Are you tired of waiting for winds of winter? Yes, we all are. I've been waiting as long as anyone. But the silver line of this whole thing is it forced me to discover some new series, and I've got a few I think some of you might like. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike, back to talk a little Ice and Fire, or more specifically, similar to a song of Ice and Fire, guys. Full disclosure, I am a humongous fan of George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire, so if you're hoping for this to be a takedown video where I flip tables because George doesn't finish the books or whatever, you won't find that here. I think the series is damn near immaculate. Really, the only complaint I have about it is that it's not finished, but I recently named it my favorite fantasy series of all time. That's a title that's kind of went back and forth with J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings new numerous times, but the silver lining about this series not being complete, guys, is I was forcing myself to find other series that I thought were somewhat similar. Now, I want to say up front, these series aren't exactly similar to A Song of Ice and Fire. The way I put it is I feel like Song of Ice and Fire fans would like that. Look, this series is incredibly unique. There's a reason every other modern fantasy series is trying to play catch up with A Song of Ice and Fire because they're all like, hey, that throne is open. Let me see if I can grab it because it's just, it's unique. There's nothing else like it. It's just special. So I want to say up front, like I said, these aren't exactly what I would call similar to a Song of Ice and Fire, but if you are digging the Song of Ice and Fire series, I think these are some series that you could check out while you wait, and you could say maybe, hey, maybe winter really is coming in the form of some of these new series that I'm going to get into. Now, first up, guys, if you've heard me on this channel all before, you know I love The Faithful and The Fallen by John Gwynn. I think that this has a large cast, huge map, political intrigue that Song of Ice and Fire fans are going to love. Now, it doesn't have as many gray characters, you know, as, as you would find in a Song of Ice and Fire book, you pretty much know who the good guys and who the bad guys are, but there are some who are a little morally ambiguous, and you've got to kind of read to find out. But uh, numerous prophecies to decipher if you're wanting something like that. you got lots of growth with some characters. You've got, you've got kind of like, like the Song of Ice and Fire, you've got the younger characters, you've got the teenage characters, you've got kind of the older characters, and they all just kind of have to find a way to work together to make this world work. But this is a really, really just a page turner of a series. I read all four books back in 2020, like back to back to back to back, right after I finished Wheel of Time. And it was just what I was looking for, really. And it has a lot of animal companions in it that I think that you guys might be interested in. I've done a full breakdown of why I think that you guys should read uh, The Faithful and the Fallen by John Gwynn. He's an author who just seems to get better and better. But for some reason, The Faithful and the Fallen will always just be really special to me. And I think it is because it kind of leans into those roots of A Song of Ice and Fire. And I pretty much think there's no way you're going to read that and not like it. Now, is it going to be as dense? Is it going to be as elaborate? Now, I'm never going to say that any of these authors are as great as George R. R. Martin, but I do think that there's going to be plenty of things that you see there that you say, okay, yeah, I like that quite a bit, and John Gwynn is definitely one of them. The guy has not written a bad book yet, and The Faithful and the Fallen is just damn near perfect. Uh, another one, this one's kind of recent, and if you're making me pick one that I say is the closest to what Song of Ice and Fire was like, I would go with this self-published author, Ryan Cahill, who has written The Bound and the Broken. Now, he's got, uh, what, three books in this, a couple of novellas out. He's got all kinds of material leading up to the release of this fourth book that is coming out very soon. But this is one of those things where the books get bigger and bigger as they go along, but somehow they just get better and better. It's really amazing what he's doing with this. So I think this is about as close as a comparison to Song of Ice and Fire as possible, because it is Dragon Rider fantasy. You're going to see lots of similarities in that regard. Now, when I say it's similar, what I mean is that you will find plenty of the same things that you like. I never feel like it's ripping off or just riffing or doing, you know, some of those other fantasy series that just change the names of all the characters and tell the same story. It definitely feels like its own story. It starts a little bit in that traditional fantasy sense. We'll be like, oh, I kind of, I kind of feel that I've felt this before. I've, I've, I've followed this kind of story before. But again, the scope in this is so grand and so epic. And it reminds me of the way I felt when I first read A Game of Thrones all the way back in the year 2000, where I just like, okay, I love this world. It's the last thing I'm thinking about before I fall asleep. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up, because you have this massive map, all these territories, incredible lore, and the character arcs in this remind me so much of Song of Ice and Fire, where you're like, okay, that character is totally unlikable. There's no way I'm rooting for them. And then a couple books later, you're like, please don't kill them, Ryan, because they're such incredible characters. And uh, I've kind of come around on them. So I think that, again, if you're looking for something that's going to scratch that Song of Ice and Fire itch, this is going to be it. And I have a little bonus here. No, the series is not done. But yes, Ryan writes incredibly, incredibly fast. And he self-publishes. 
So you won't have to wait for a long turnaround once he is done with these books. But they are massive, chunky, beefy books. And uh, I would say that, you know, hey, go ahead and dive in now. I'm pretty sure you're probably not going to catch up. I, I, I don't know. Some of you guys might. I don't know. I think about it, it took me a, it took me about three months to read uh, the first three books and the no, two novellas in the series. And there is continuing to be more. But uh, yeah, he's writing for the fourth book right now. And uh, he really does keep you really up to date on how it's progressing. So uh, if you're a Song of Ice and Fire fan, obviously you're apprehensive about starting series that aren't complete yet. And I understand that. With me, I'm like, okay, if they're big, chunky, beefy books, I feel like I need a little bit of recovery time before I start the next one. And also he writes incredibly fast and he communicates with his his readers so, so much. You'll know, hey, this guy's taking this seriously. I'm not worried about this being another incomplete series. But you're looking for a completed series. I got one that I feel like might be a little different. That is The Warlord Chronicles by Bernard Cornwell. Now with this, imagine George R.R. R. Martin decided to take a spin on the Arthurian legend because I feel like of these series I'm writing here or I'm talking about, this one is one is written the most like a Song of Ice and Fire book. Of course, you have all kinds of legends and things like that, but it's kind of it can take it at like a ground level where it's like, okay, Imagine you're writing the Arthurian legend as realistically as humanly possible in a historical fiction kind of sense. That is what Bernard Cornwell did here, but it's just a cruel and unforgiving world as the time period dictates and battles and war and things. It's just going to happen. There's some really, really dark stuff in here, but it has those massive battles and the duels. The duels might be like the one-on-one -on -one duels. Those might be the best I have ever read, and I'm not even kidding. It's really, really just that impressive stuff, but uh, no one is safe in this. The backstabbing and the politics and the turncoats, and it's one of those things where you feel like, okay, like George, where George will base something off history, but you still never see where it's going. Same with this. You think you know the Arthurian legend, the basics, and he turns them on his head and does some different things that I think keeps you guessing along the way. But this is a completed series, a trilogy, and it's incredible. It, for this alone, I want to read more Bernard Cornwell, no doubt. I'm going to do, uh, what, Last Kingdom, uh, Saxon Stories, eventually. But uh, this, yes, very good. And I think that even if you aren't into historical fiction, I feel like all of us kind of know the sword and the stone kind of legend. I feel like you can play with that a little bit, and Bernard Cornwell does in very much that George R.R. R. Martin kind of way. Now, if you have, want to talk about the book that George will credit as his primary influence for A Song of Ice and Fire, you can't go much further than talking about Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn by Mr. Tad Williams. This is one for a long time that I didn't read, and my brother all these years ago, I said, I was real excited because he, he he was first one I knew that read fantasy. My gateway into fantasy was his bookshelf in his bedroom, you know, and I was all excited to tell him about, hey, Song of Ice and Fire, this series is really great that I'm reading. Have you heard of it? And before I even had the sense out of my mouth, he was like, no, that series just ripped off Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. I'm like, huh? You know, I had no idea what he's talking about. Now that I've read it and I've reviewed all three books of this series on the channel, guys, it was a series I really did like quite a bit. And it is because... It is very Song of Ice and Fiery. Now, I never felt like it was a ripoff. Like my brother says, I can see several things that are, you know, very much like there's some character names that might be similar. There's a character who you can see where the influence for the Hound was and things like that. But I think that this is the one where you feel like the series or just the genre as a whole kind of took that first step from traditional fantasy into semi-dark. It wasn't full-on grimdark, but it was things that authors weren't doing at that time period when he wrote this, where it's just a the, basically the genesis of grimdark, where you see that the tide was turning a little bit, where you could have some gray characters, where you could have you know some, some things that might be considered a little darker, and you were kind of surprised that publishers were letting it go at that time period. But beautiful prose, several warring kingdoms and prophecies, all those things that you've come to know and love and expect, from a Song of Ice and Fire book, but I feel like this series, guys, is like the perfect marriage of Tolkien and George R. R. Martin. That's what it makes me feel like. It isn't quite as dark as a Song of Ice and Fire. It isn't quite as brutal, but it definitely has kind of those those familiar tones of a Tolkien or something like that. The way I put it was like this feels like if J. R. R. Tolkien had written a book in the '90s. That's kind of what this series felt like to me. But knowing what I know about Song of Ice and Fire, I can definitely see why a lot of people were kind of gatekeeper about it, about saying, no, 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 Song of Ice and Fire just completely ripped this off. I mean, I think the blurb on the front is, inspired me to write my own seven book trilogy. Ha ha. Very funny, George. Very, very funny. But uh, yeah, this is, he has said several times, this was his primary influence for Song of Ice and Fire. And for that alone, I think you guys should check it out. And I don't see any way if you, if you like 
Tolkien and George R. R. Martin you're not going to like that series. It's amazing. If you guys have hung around this channel at all, I'm pretty sure you know what my last one's going to be because it was one of my first reviews on the channel was me talking about the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie. And the way that I sold it in that was imagine a song of ice and fire without prophecies or dragons and you got the First Law because I think out of all these series... This is the only one that can come even close to touching George R. R. Martin's morally gray characters. Because these characters are really not good people. Like, you'll look at it and you'll be like, wow, are there good guys or bad guys? I feel like all these series I've mentioned before, you can kind of tell which ones are the good guys or the bad guys. This one, not so much. But the thing is, is you find yourself rooting for these completely detestable characters because his character writing is just so damn good. The dialogue is some of the best in modern fantasy. The body count is absurdly high. No one is safe. And it's the only series I think besides The Song of Ice Fire where I've ever felt like a main character could die right now, and it wouldn't shock me. I mean, it would shock me, but it still it wouldn't surprise me, rather. Let's put it that way. But you find yourself rooting for these somewhat shitty people, and I feel like Joe has probably come the closest to George in finding a way to do that. You know, something like pushing, pushing a kid out the window, and a couple books later, you're like begging the author not to kill that character off. Joe is able to do that with his characters a lot. He'll he'll have a character that just shows up and does something just completely despicable, or you're like, there's no way I'm ever going to root for that character. A book or two later, you're like, that's my boy. That's my boy. Don't you dare do that, Joe. But uh, again, betrayals, incredible character arcs. I think about like where a character like Giselle Dan Luther starts in the series and where he goes by book three. It's absolutely incredible. And again, some of the best dialogue in the game. I still quote Sandan Galacta nonstop. This book actually has one of his quotes on the cover. <laughs> no, that's actually a different one. This is uh, Say One Thing from Logan Nine Fingers. That's another character, uh, Logan Nine Fingers. It's, again, just his characters are just so memorable, and I don't want to give anything away about them. So if you haven't uh, read any First Law yet, pick up the original First Law trilogy, starting with the blade itself, and you're going to just be floored if you do love A Song of Ice and Fire. Now look, that's five. I can name more. I'm not going to lie to you. That's the five that I would say go ahead and pick those up, and you'll be the most satisfied with. Now, I do want to kind of, before I go, mention a few that have been recommended to me, but I haven't read yet. Now, these are ones a lot of the times in my Song of Ice and Fire videos, people will pop up in there and say, hey, as much as you like Song of Ice and Fire, I think you'd like this series. And, you know, nine times out of ten, it's something I've read. But there are a handful that have come up a lot. So I can't really testify that these are like A Song of Ice Fire, but they are ones that get highly recommended to me because I know someone will drop them in the comments. But also, if you want to check them out on your own. First is the Dagger and the Coin series by Daniel Abraham. I do own this series, but I've never actually cracked it open. Now, a lot of people don't know that uh, Daniel Abraham was an understudy for, for George R. R. Martin. He really did help them out before they went. Him and uh, Ty Frank went and wrote The Expanse together. So I can see the dagger and the coin having some of those George R. R. Martin influences in the story. Again, I can't verify this, but apparently it is uh, what military and kind of financial fantasy. And as someone who works in finance, that sounds very exciting. You know, I I love the stuff with the Iron Bank and Feast for Crows when a lot of people didn't like it, you know? So that works for me. Next up would be the Dandelion Dan Dynasty by Ken Liu. People have been just killing me to read this series for a while. And then the Game of Thrones or the Song of Ice and Fire comparisons, obviously, that got my interest a little bit. I've heard it's just a massive, massive series with just so many characters and just sweeping in scope. And I, I'm, I'm very, very interested in it. Honestly, guys, I don't have it yet. Uh, I'm tr hoping I can be able to get my hands on that Midnight Edition that The Broken Binding is putting out eventually. And that will definitely inspire me to read it a little earlier. But that one is definitely on my radar. And again, a lot of Song of Ice and Fire fans really highly recommend it. Uh, the Second Apocalypse by R. Scott Baker. Now, this is a unique one because it gets recommended to me from a Song of Ice and Fire fans and Dune fans. And that's like my two favorite, that's my favorite fantasy series, and that's my favorite science fiction book ever. You know, so it's like, wow, I mean, Dune's my favorite book ever, period. So that's, obviously, that got my attention. Haven't read it. It's one of those I kept putting off saying I was going to finish Malazan first. I don't think I can put up with the cries much longer. I did get bullied by a trio of fellow booktubers recently in totally, totally like a positive way. And I, I, I think uh, you guys will like 
something that I have in the plans very, very soon. Stay tuned. At the end of this month, you'll probably know what they are. But uh, yeah, I, that, I don't know how much longer I can hold off without reading Second Apocalypse because again, you're comparing like two of my favorite things ever to that series. Well, that's a, that's a high bar, but I'm going with, with tempered expectations. So again, I can't verify if it is like that. But again, that's, that's, that's the recommendations I get a lot. And I'm hoping they are accurate. And lastly, uh, Wars of Light and Shadow by Jandy Wirt. This is one that Jandy actually sent me like her whole series. And thank you so much for that. It was way so, it was way too kind of you to do that. But uh, she actually messaged me after I finished Realm of the Elderlings and was like, hey, I heard you got an opening for another long, slow burn, multi-book fantasy series. And I thought I'd shoot my shot. So I thought it was very, very kind of her to send those to me. And again, I don't know, this gets a lot more comparisons to Memory, Star and Thorn than A Song of Ice and Fire. And that's where the comments all come from is my Memory, Star and Thorn videos. But again, I'm saying if you're getting all these recommendations for a Memory, Star and Thorn from Game of Thrones fans, and you're getting all these Song of Ice and Fire recommendations from people who read Memory, Star and Thorn, I feel like maybe these are going to kind of be, you know, exclusive to one another. And Janie's going to have a little bit of things in there. Now, Janie's an old school vet. I'm sure she's got some things that might make you think of that. And I would, it would be hard to imagine that any fancy author isn't fan somewhat of George's series. And there's going to be some influences in there as there is for George with his influences. But that's what I have, guys. I would be curious to know, one, have you read any of these? Do you agree with my picks? Uh, two, have, what about these ones that have been recommended to me? Do you agree with those? Or lastly, is there any that I didn't list here that you think do really scratch that Song of Ice and Fire itch? So again, guys, you're not going to read any of these series and be like, oh, I don't need Song of Ice and Fire anymore. I've got this now. I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't know. Something's just everybody's mileage is going to vary a little bit, I think. But I do feel like, hey, if you uh, just want something to kind of hold you over, any of these series really are going to kind of get you excited. And I think you're going to have a good time because, again, I feel like Song of Ice and Fire fans will like a lot of the things that are in these books. But in the end, guys, it's it's okay to pick up new series. Look, I feel like no, no, nothing's ever going to give me that high ever again that I got reading Song of Ice and Fire way back when. You know, it was just one of the first things I read that was anything like that. And I've been kind of chasing that ever since, chasing the tail of the dragon in the uh, the non-drug related kind of way. But uh, I, it's, it's something that I feel like there are other great series out there. And if you just constantly say nothing's ever going to make me love fantasy like A Song of Ice and Fire did, you know, you never know unless you try, you know. And uh, sure, I have some series, I try them, they get recommended to me, they don't work out. But all of these have been recommendations to me. And I never would have discovered them if I didn't give them a try instead of just cross my arms and being like, oh, it'll never make me feel like Song of Ice and Fire. And then, you know, they may not for you either, but I hope you will check some of them out. So if you want to know anything about these guys, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any recommendations for myself or for other viewers, please drop them down below. I'd love to hear them. And uh, I will talk to you guys in the comments.